Hey, welcome back to Sonia Poulton Live. We're getting there. We're beating it. Karina Hansen is a 24-year-old girl who lives in Denmark. She suffers from me, myalgia, encephalomyelitis, and people there, and doctors there rather, decided the best treatment for her was that she should be forcibly removed from her home by five policemen, two social workers, and taken to the Hamon Neuro Center. Her parents were not allowed to see her for three weeks. She was then put on a treatment of antidepressants, physical exercise, and cognitive behavioral therapy, because in Denmark, a functional neurological disorder is understood to be psychosomatic illness, and this is how they treat it. Karina's parents have not seen their daughter since February this year. Meanwhile, they haven't received reason for Karina's removal. Rebecca Hansen is the president of the ME Association of Denmark, and she also runs Karina Hansen's Facebook page, which campaigns to inform others of her situation and the plight of other people suffering from ME. Also joining me is Jane Colby, who runs the Times Trust, which is the longest established national UK service for children and young people with ME and their families. She also suffered from ME herself. Hello, welcome ladies. Are you, are you with me? Yes, yes. Thanks thank, for having me. Yes, uh, thank you for joining me, Rebecca. Thank you for joining me, Jane. Hi. Rebecca, please tell us about Karina, because I have be, be, been aware of, of Karina's plight for some time now. I mean, I, 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 I'm a su supporter of, uh, of ME patients. I've written... I've written We're glad to hear that. <laughs> I want, do you know, because it has to be done, because you know as well as I do, there are serious problems within the media, aren't there, in terms of the issue of ME. So, for the yeah, benefit... There, there's a misinformation campaign. Tell us about say. it. Tell us about it. Um, well, about Karina, um, she had um, chosen herself to not have the, the official government treatment because she had tried that, um, the exercise, and it had made her um, progressively worse to the point by 2009 she was completely bedbound. So she had contacted ME experts and gotten a treatment plan, and she wanted to get treatment at home. But the Danish government denied um, they would not allow her GP to give her this treatment at home and instead they removed her and are now forcibly giving her this treatment at, at Hamel Neuro Center. Um, we don't know that she's getting antidepressants, but we know that she's getting the physical training. She's now been there for 10 months, so, and she, she has said she's tried everything she could to express her, her will to not be there. She's told the, her doctors that you're killing me. She's scratched them. She said she wants to come home. They completely ignore her. This Unusual. Sorry, Jane. This has happened in England. Yes. It's horrible, yeah. I mean, it happened right back um, in the late 1990s, and I went to a hospital with the paediatrician. They wouldn't let the paediatrician, who used to be looking after this young boy, in to see him. Right. He was locked away in the psychiatric unit in exactly the same way, exactly the same thing was done. He was there for many times. There was an injunction taken out so that nobody could speak about it at all at all or have any publicity and when he finally was allowed out late in his teens he was in such a state he couldn't recognize his parents and he could hardly lift his head off the pillow it was absolutely appalling now jane why is there such misunderstanding about me well actually i was once asked to write a judge's briefing right. um, which is on, on the Times Trust website. It's called ME the Illness and Common Misconceptions, Abuse, Neglect, and Mental Incapacity. I think it's basically three things. People can't accept that ME, they think it's a mental health disorder. Right. They think the treatments that are recommended by the National Institute for Clinical Evidence can always be expected to cure right. the illness, right. and this is the CBT graded exercise thing, right. and they think that the illness isn't necessarily that severe or that long lasted. So right. when you get a, a young woman or a young man or a child suffering from this in a long-term way and they're very seriously ill, people turn around and say, well, that can't be any. Right. I mean, my and first that, introduction, as you're aware, Jane, was, was through watching the film Voices from the Shadows. And I, I, I mean, I watched it and I was absolutely stunned. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, how people who were clearly physically ill were being forced to endure physical exercise and being told, you can do this, try harder. And it just, it was quite astonishing to me. It just, it seemed like the height of abuse and neglect that was taking place. Well, it is. And as I say in my new book, which is free online, that I'm, I'm writing, Emmy the New Plague dot net, in the, I mean, I say in the future, people will say there was once a school of thought that people who got worse when they exercised 
got better when they were exercised. Right. I mean, what is that about? Uh, absolutely. Rebecca, what is your experience in terms of that? Because obviously, I'm, I mean, to my understanding, this is a worldwide problem. And yes. people are being systematically and routinely mistreated globally with regard to the issue of ME. Now, the, the World Health Organization, I believe in 1969, that's a considerable period of time, announced that it was a neurological disorder. So why are we still mistreating it? I, I believe it's because um, the, the psychiatrists have a really strong lobby and they have decided that this is a, a good patient group and they, they, they would like to, I think that they have a theory that ME is a psychological disease and they've gotten the, the ear of the government for some reason and the government has been listening to them and only publishing things that support the psychiatrists' theories. That's what's happening in Denmark anyway. There's tons of evidence out there that ME is a, a neurological and a, an autoimmune disease, but they just won't look at that evidence when when they come up to reviews and things. So they've, they've um, I, I don't understand it either. I don't understand how all this huge body of evidence can be completely ignored. And there's so much evidence that exercise makes these patients worse, and that is just completely ignored. I don't understand how that can happen, really. I mean, it, it, it does confuse me greatly. But, but Jane, I mean, obviously, Jane, you and I have talked before a number of times about some of the issues that are facing children with ME oh, yes. and, and their families and the, yes. the intervention of, of social workers and how the system seeks to take over. Can you just share some of that information? Because I think people would be quite alarmed to know what some families are enduring. Not only are they or their children sick, but then they, they are subject to all of this kind of bullying and intervention from the state. Yes, and I, I'm very glad you've raised this about parents need to be watchful um, because I believe all parents, really, whose children have got ME need to look at their child's notes, medical and school notes, because they keep finding these terrible suspicions there. We're up to 114 cases of families whose children have ME, and they've either <coughs> been facing child protection suspicions or procedures, and they've come to us for help. Now, 100% of those cases have been dropped, no case to answer, right. and there's something very wrong with that kind of statistic, isn't there? Well, clearly there is, and I'll tell you why, because the, the last time that you and I talked about uh, trying to raise awareness on this, it was only up to 90. Yes, it's and now 114. So it, it, w w this is really quite ser serious in terms of this seems to be absolutely spreading. As you say, in 100% of the cases, there's actually no case to answer. But no, that's right. But I, I, I've received calls <laughs> from parents who get the most harrowing intervention from social service in terms of their children. Why aren't they at school? Why aren't they better performing? Are you keeping them at home against their will? All of this kind of stuff. Threats to remo forcibly remove them from the home and forcibly feed children with ME. You know, it's like some kind of Gestapo bullion regime that is being allowed to take place. And it, it seems entirely wrong for me that we're mistreating so many people. You know, well, they are. That's and exactly it's really, what happened in, uh, sorry, in it's really good when you were, find um, a professional uh, who thinks, you know, what they might okay, call one a normal, time, one a time. human being. Yeah. Say that again, Jane. Pardon? Say that again. It's really good uh, when it's you... It's very good to find, that when you find a professional who actually behaves in a normal, compassionate way. Right. You know, like a parent would behave towards their own child. I mean, Rebecca, this is an extreme situation, what's occurred with Karina, isn't it? But it, it's it is extreme, but I'm not at all surprised. Yes, it is extreme, but it, it has happened you. a lot of times before. And um, Dr. Nigel Spite and Dr. Malcolm Hooper in the UK have both written about how, how this happens and how they blame the parents for, for um, causing the child's illness. They, they don't believe that anyone can be this ill with ME. That was what the, the psychiatrist said here, that she could not be that ill because of ME. It must be something the parents are doing. Right. They, they accused her mother of um, abusing her, and when there was no, there's absolutely no proof her mother did anything wrong, so they, they actually never filed charges against her mom, but they still haven't released her. Right. But um, after, after she had been at the, um, the clinic for about five months, then, of course, their treatments for ME, you know, the um, exercise therapy, were not helping her. They were making her worse. Right. So then they changed her diagnosis to a psychiatric diagnosis, which I'm sure Jane is familiar with, pervasive refusal syndrome. I've written about so. it. 
And do you so know, this is real witch hunt syndrome. It's, it's like a witch hunt because if you query the diagnosis and say you don't believe it's correct, right. you fit the profile of a parent in denial. Yes. And you fit the profile of a parent whose child has got pervasive refusal syndrome. Right. One of the things that, 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 that I, as a sort of total amateur approach in this subject, as I say, my introduction was watching Voices from the Shadows, which I would re highly recommend to anybody. It's a, a, a magnificent film, a documentary rather, in so many respects, and really very sort of illuminating. But one of the, I think one of the confusions for people is that ME is associated with chronic fatigue. And that really is just sort of one of the numerous symptoms that are attendant with people with ME. So why is the issue of chronic fatigue thrust so large on the issue of ME? Um, uh, uh, Jane, answer that for me, would you? Well, really, it, got, uh, it goes back to the fact that in the 20th century, there were scientists in this country who knew perfectly well that they were looking at a viral illness Right. probably related to poliomyelitis, which is what I'm writing about now. Right. And they knew all this, but the Americans couldn't repeat and re they couldn't replicate the same results when they did the same experiments. Now, later on, of course, Dr. Cheer in America has found out why they weren't doing it right. But okay. in the meantime, they went off and invented another term, and they started looking at it. And chronic fatigue syndrome was only ever meant to be a concept for research. Right. Suddenly, they took it into the uh, public domain, the dom started to diagnose people with it in clinics and right. in surgeries That's as right. if it was some kind of illness, which it isn't. Right. It's, just, it's just a set of symptoms they decided sure. to put together as a profile. Sure. It's a nonsense. It's not a disease at all. And Emmy has got trapped underneath right. that dreadful umbrella term. Right. And it is a dreadful umbrella term. And the reason why is because it sort of lessens what's really going on, doesn't it? Because it immediately, in the eyes of a sort of lay person such as myself, we go, oh, you're a bit tired. And, and that is the most um, r repetitive thing that people with ME tell me that they hear. People go, oh, it's just about being a bit tired, isn't it? And I certainly operated under that misconception for the, the greatest period of time. So, Re uh, Rebecca, in terms of, you know, obviously what Karina's enduring, not only are they sort of saying it's in the mind, but they're but it's also lessened about how it's really her body is being attacked as well, isn't it? I can't hear you, Rebecca, sorry. The magnitude of, of the disease that um, w uh, the test that Karina had done before she went into the hospital showed that she had immune dysfunction and she had um, hormone dysfunction. Right. And, and that's typical for ME patients, but they, that's one reason they are claiming she doesn't have ME because they don't think that they think that ME patients have nothing wrong with them. So they, they really do not understand that um, the reason you can't exercise is there's a, an energy production problem in the body. It's not because you're tired. Your body just cannot make energy. And, so, what, and that causes pain. And Right. And what do we know, Rebecca, in terms of what the impact of exercise has on a body with ME? Um, I'm, I'm not a scientist. So no? I, I know that... Um, some of the cytokines increase or decrease. Your body's response to exercise is completely abnormal from what a normal person is. Um, you you create more lactic acid in the yes, muscles. Yes, in a second, Jane, you can definitely. Yes, Jane. Okay. Well, so, yeah, maybe Jane should answer that. She probably can okay. do Okay, Jane, please. Two types of muscle fibers. And one type of muscle fibers, they're there for emergencies if you had to run away from a tiger or something like that. Right, sure. And they work without oxygen and they work instantly. But normally, if you're running, like, you know, for a long period of time, for example, a healthy person, the other sets of muscles, uh, the muscle fibers take over and they use oxygen and that goes on and on and on. Now, that system is completely disrupted with people with ME and there's been plenty of research to show it's disrupted. So what happens is they go on and on using the wrong sort of emergency muscle fibers, which get worse and worse and waste away and won't work at all. So the doctors who are prescribing this, and I hear one harrowing case after another of, of people going to their doctors, and some doctors don't even uh, acknowledge the existence of ME, you know, much less know how to treat it. But the doctors who prescribe a sort of course 
of exercise. Are they not really truly breaking the Hippocratic Oath, though? Aren't they going against what they're supposed to be there for in the first place? Well, Absolutely. definitely a lot of patients have what's called iatrogenic injury, which right. basically means they've been injured right. by what the medical profession has told them to do. Oh, and, and, so, and yeah. basically, you could hold somebody liable for that if you could prove it. Now, this is the problem. This whole concept, you brought it up. You brought up the key point, this nonsense about fatigue. Right. It isn't fatigue at all. Right. The key symptom with ME is that you become more ill after exertion. Right. That's not the same as being tired, is it? G g uh, hell no. Absolutely not. I mean, it, it's, you know, the other thing that I've encountered as well, because I, I, I wrote two articles about ME after yes, I was... I read them. Well, I was completely blindsided after watching Voices from the Shadows, and I thought, I've got to do something, I can't bear it. And I wrote the first one, and what astonished me was the overwhelming global response from the ME community of people saying, at last, somebody... Well, you can't keep people down forever. You've got the people's voice there. I'm yeah. writing a book about the patient's voice. Right. You've got Rebecca looking at Karina's voice. Yes. Now, what we've actually got, Rebecca's absolutely right. We've got all these medical people putting their heads in the sand. It's chronic ostrich syndrome. Right. So, Rebecca, in terms of Karina, what, what, what is the sort of the outlook for her at this moment in time? What's her future? Well, in, um, she has a guardian that's been appointed by the court, and until June of next year, he makes all decisions for her. Um, he will not listen to the parents. He thinks that um, the psychiatrists know what they're doing. Um, at, we don't know after that. I'm assuming they'll... They, the, at the last meeting that the parents had with the psychiatrist, they told her the treatment could take up to four years. So the parents have still not, and her siblings have still not seen her. Um, they've not gotten any written explanation as to why they have taken her ME diagnosis away from her, why she's gotten this new psychiatric diagnosis. Right. This is state kidnap, though, isn't it, really? It, it is. It's, it's complete it's kidnapping, and I think it's experimenting on a patient um, because they, had a, they have a theory they want to prove that exercise can help ME patients, and I, I think that's why she was taken that way. So Karina but is effectively a I, guinea pig at this moment I, in time. I think she's a political guinea pig, yeah. And um, she's really gotten worse since had they've taken her. She wait could wait a second, Jane. Yes, go on. Hello? She, she, tool, she could speak it? when she when they took her. Um, now she does not speak very much. Uh, she's worse, and she still cannot walk after 10 months of being there. So there is a deterioration in her. Yes, they, we feel that there is a deterioration from what they have told us about her. Just, t just, just tell us, for the benefit of people watching this, how can we help Karina in any way, shape, or form? I know we're limited. But, but what can we do? Is there a group that people can go to? I... Well, they, they can go on the Justice for Karina Facebook page, and there are um, their letter writing, um, what's it called? <laughs> I can only think of the Danish word. There's like, um, you can write letters to Amnesty International. Right. You can write letters to the, um, the Board of Health, uh, the Minister of Health. But we've done that, and we've it, nothing has helped. We've gone to the top in the, the Danish um, Ministry of Health, and they will not do anything. They think the psychiatrists are doing the right thing. Right. So I, I think maybe if we write to Amnesty and ask them to do uh, and a third-person investigation of the of the breach of human rights that have happened in this case, okay. and what the parents want are are a group of ME experts to come in and examine Karina. Right. Because they want um, an outside uh, opinion. Right. Jane Colby. It's not as if there aren't any experts. I mean, I've worked for years with Dr. Spate. Right. And there are other doctors. And there is, a say, as I say, it's perfectly possible to prove that the viruses are there living Absolutely. in the stomach. Yes. You can find them. Yeah. You do have to do a special sort of endoscopy to do it, but you can find them. And the reason people are, keep on saying that people with ME have got a dysfunctional immune system, well, Dr. Dowsett, who I worked with for, for so many years, the microbiologist who was microbiologist extraordinaire, she pointed out to me, it's not that it, it's a dysfunctional um, immune system, it's an overactive one, but it's not overactive, it's active because it's fighting a persistent viral infection. Right. You need it to be active, right. and this viral infection won't go away while you are exercising somebody because the very fact of exercising them feeds the virus. It change, changes the chemistry in the cell to feed the virus so it can replicate more. Right. It is unbelievable. Right.
Right. Thank you very much, Jane Colby, always, you know, great authority on the subject. I hope you will come back and join us. This will be an issue that we will keep returning to, the mistreatment of people. Rebecca Hansen, I thank you greatly for the work that you're doing to raise awareness on this issue. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Tanya. Now, what can I say? What a harrowing show in so many respects. You know, we, we're looking to cover everything that we humanly can in terms of, you know, injustices, what, what it's truly affecting people. And if we don't cover them, you know, there's no chance that any other media outlet will, frankly, because we just heard that. So tell us what you want us to cover and look into our Facebook pages, facebook.com forward slash TPV, Sonia Poulton. And that's all one word, no spaces. Do join us again tomorrow, please. At the same time, have a lovely evening. We survived it. Woo! Take care. Night-night.